What's going on, everybody? Shoot the fire, Brooklyn fight to the building with the one and only Miss Deidre, the boxing lioness, Chestnut. How you feeling? I'm good. You know, <laughs> times are tough, but we're getting through it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So how you been? How's everything? Good. You know, I think it's been almost like two years since you and I had last connected. We were yes. supposed to connect last year. At the fight, at the Joshua fight. Yeah, but it was a crazy <laughs> night. We just yeah. never got it. never happened. I know, but honestly, like overall, everything's going really well. Okay. How you been how how, how you been dealing with everything with the COVID and you know, taking care of yourself and things like that? Um, like I'm really just trying to follow the laws i'm out here in canada so it's a bit yeah. different i don't know i know everywhere every country is a bit different us unless you want to cough up a lot of money you have no choice but to respect these laws which rightfully so it makes sense right like we're really trying to protect not only ourselves but the people around us yes um so i've just been it's just been myself my family that i live with um and just at first i was struggling with trying to get some kind of structured lifestyle to live a productive life because okay. I'm so used to training working and studying and when like obviously I'm out of my house from like six o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night so for me to now be at home for 24 hours like I was going nuts at first mm. but I just started like every night I write myself a, a to-do list for the next day so at least I know that like I have things to do I have some kind of obligation or like some kind of schedule around uh -huh. um but it took a it took a few weeks for me to like adjust and and get used to this i really hope this isn't the lifestyle that we start to live though now you said the rules and regulations the laws in canada what yeah. are some of the things that they're telling y'all that y'all can't do or can do well basically everything public has been shut down so only like um, necessary stores and and um, it basically only necessary shops are open at this point um, you cannot be within the six foot um, social distancing parameters mm -hmm. they've shut down like all public parks um, mm -hmm. fields and everything and if you get stopped and you're with somebody and you're not within six feet of them and you guys don't live in the same household, they're handing out fines that are like seven hundred and fifty dollars. Jesus Christ. Um if you're in the same car, like they're pulling people over that have more than one person in the same car. And if you two don't live in the same house, they're handing out fines. Um if you if your if your job is not a necessary job where you have to go to and you can work from home, yeah. your employer has to give you a letter to mm -hmm. say that you are out of the house because you're going to work. If you mm -hmm. don't have that, they could administer fines. So like they're handing out fines like crazy. Um, they're paying people to basically snitch and <laughs> say like, oh, oh. stuff is at the park and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's wow. really crazy here. So for me, I'm just trying to respect the law and not catch any fines right so yeah. um my sister's become my training partner my sister's not an athlete like she just <laughs> she's the opposite of me when it comes to sports and stuff but she's been accompanying me so she's made it so much easier for me to just get up and do something and not always be by myself mm. but yeah the, the laws here are crazy what they're doing right now now is this all is this all over canada or is this just part of your city um well, I'm in Ontario, so that's my province. Yeah. Um, you guys call them states, but I'm in Ontario. So <laughs> really, in Ontario, it's like that. I know it's like that in Quebec as well, but I don't know about the rest of the country. It's kind of varying from, like, province to province. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. That's... Yeah. Damn, and they pay people to snitch. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're giving them some kind of incentive. <laughs> incentive. <laughs> yeah, for those who may not know you, I, I know you, but for those who may not know you, can you share a little bit of your background with, you know, your history of boxing and everything? Because I definitely want to yeah. touch on the, the Sierra Leone piece, but we're going to get there. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. Um, so obviously everyone knows me as Deidre Chestnut. Um, I got the name Boxing Lioness from young. I just really liked lions. And when I was younger, people always say, oh, you don't look like a boxer. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of just stuck because lions don't look like an aggressive animal. They're very subtle. They're very calm until it's time for them to pounce to do whatever they need to do. So that's actually how I got the name. Um, as far as boxing, I started boxing really young. I initially hated boxing. 
And that was because my parents owned the boxing gym and I was too young to participate in any of the activities. So yeah. after school, we would go to the gym and myself and my younger sister would have to sit in the gym for four hours every night and watch everyone else do these activities. And we were just like a new <laughs> So I hated boxing, like absolutely hated it. Mm. I didn't get into it until one year there was a tournament and it was the first year where I wasn't playing soccer for that weekend. And my father said, oh, why don't you come and watch? And by fluke, there were two girls. They might've been just a year older than me, but they were boxing. And anyways, it was like the worst fight I'd ever watched in my <laughs> life. <laughs> I couldn't believe that people were calling this boxing. So I yeah. said to my dad, I was like, I, if that's what boxing is, I want to box because this is easy. <laughs> so that's like literally from that weekend, I said yeah. to my dad, am I old enough to box yet? And he was like, not this year, but next year. I was like, okay, I'm in. If that's what boxing is, like I was just so offended because I was a soccer player and I played soccer all year round, winter, summertime. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that I was in shape and I knew like physically I would be able to fight. I have a fighting spirit. Like I'm a fighter. Yes. And so that's how I got into the sport. It was really just like trying to challenge myself and knowing what my own ability was. And I just never took it serious until I was about 16 because okay. I, was the, I was the soccer player. And that was my, my first, like my, my biggest priority was for me to get a full ride scholarship and do all kinds of stuff with soccer. And I just did boxing like on the side for like the one month that I had a break from soccer. Gotcha. And then, um, but as time got on, I had a few injuries in soccer and I just decided, you know what? I have three national titles, which I fought for. I had three mm -hmm. Canadian national titles and that was just me doing it as a hobby. So I just kind of ran with, ran with boxing from there. And like today, it's just imagine how far I've come. It's, it's crazy. Cause yeah. one, I, I went from never wanting to have anything to do with the sport. And now that that's all I live is boxing at this point. What weight class you were fighting in when you won the national championship championship? Um, I fought at a few. Like as a junior, I was sixty four kgs, and then as a senior, I was sixty kgs. So sixty four, I think they would say is welterweight, and then and then sixty kgs is a lightweight. Okay. Um, one thing I know about you, you are like a world traveler. <laughs> like you, I love you, traveling. Like, I love traveling. <laughs> Every time I look up, you're either in Spain, you're in Italy, you're in England, yeah. Jamaica. Um, I yeah. know you're yeah. down there with Lennox Lewis in this camp and, and training down mm -hmm. there. How, how was that experience? Oh, I absolutely loved it. First of all, the Lewises have like were a very big influence and just like showing me another side of boxing because obviously I've only ever competed so when I had the opportunity to participate in the camp and, and be one of the camp leaders for the, the kids there you just got to see a different side of what you can do with boxing like there's so much more than your own um than your own needs mm -hmm. with this like boxing really is a tool to like bring the community together provide for others that maybe can't provide for themselves and like I fell in love with the kids out there till this day some of them still reach out to me um I I don't think there's any any volunteer work I've done that compares to being out there in Jamaica and being with these kids especially because it's a bit different these kids um they're not obligated to go to camp it's not like here in the western world where we have to do something our parents wake us up and tell you oh you need to go to camp or you need yeah. to go to school you need to you know like these are seven so these kids were between, I want to say about seven to 16, and they would get up in the morning at seven to eight o'clock in the morning and walk their bus to camp and train. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was them doing it at their own will. And I had so much appreciation for that. And I, that's something that I took home because I would think at that age, my mom was definitely yanking me out of bed, telling me, you know, screaming down the house to get ready. Mm -hmm. And you just see these kids get up every morning, get their stuff together and come to camp. So I absolutely loved it. And I hope that those kids took something away from me, but I've definitely taken something away from them as well. And like, that's something that I hold very close to my heart. Okay. A lot, and I love the way you, you just expressed that because boxing is definitely a community that definitely, you know, it brings a lot of people together for the love mm -hmm. of the sport and to learn the things like that. It's a way of life in a sense, you know, so yeah. I love the way yeah. you just explained that. Um, yeah. That fateful night, June 1st, <laughs> <laughs> what was going through your mind? <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. I couldn't even tell you. Okay, first of all, I had watched, okay, so I had watched Ruiz um, a few years prior, and I think he was fighting on the undercard when King Kong was fighting Jennings. Okay. I believe he was, yeah, I believe he was on the undercard. If not, it was around that same time. And when I saw him, I was like, boy, this guy's got fast hands. Like, that was the one thing that just stuck to me is like, how explosive and fast this guy was for his size, yes. even though for the heavyweights, he was considered a bit smaller and yes. a bit like less athletic. But when I had seen him like a few years back, I thought to myself, like, this guy's a monster. His speed is something else. So with the whole Miller thing, like all the theatrics, it was, it was a really big shift in what was to be expected. But in the back of my mind, I said, all I knew is that Ruiz has a lot of experience and he can fight. That's all I knew. And I also knew that, like, Josh was coming with a full arsenal. Like, yeah. the guy is an absolute beast. So, styles make fights. And that day, they had two, comp like, complimenting styles where it was a very explosive fight. And just things just took a turn. I, I definitely wasn't expecting it. But um, that weekend, Ruiz took advantage of a huge opportunity that he had. Later on, it's a different story. But that night, I was just in absolute disbelief. Like, I'm not kidding. When I tell you, I was, because I wasn't too far off. So yeah. I was just standing there like, am I really seeing this? Mm -hmm. I just, I just felt so like, I, it was like insane. Like I don't even know how to put the words. Hmm? Like an out of body experience, like pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty yeah. much, yeah. I was I was upstairs watching because they wouldn't let us go anywhere. Security and the guard and they oh like we were trying to link up to do the interview, but security was like oh you can't you gotta wait. Yeah. You gotta so, um, but yeah, I was sitting up there watching it. With, um, at least set back Michelle Phelps and um a few other people, and we were also in disbelief because as the fight as the fight was progressing and then we see Joshua drop him and then he gets up and he hits him with one of the best right hands that I ever see Joshua hit somebody with. And when mm -hmm. we still stood there and then he gets clocked and he gets knocked down, it was like, oh, that's it. It's about to be something mm -hmm. tonight. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what it is with Ruiz? Like, so when, okay, so when someone gets rocked, right, mm -hmm. sometimes, depending on the person, you can read them to see where they are. Yeah. But when Ruiz got dropped, you couldn't really read him. Yeah. Couldn't tell if he was hurt. You knew he was on the ground. He stayed down for a bit. You couldn't tell if he was just trying to do it strategically yeah. or if he was really struggling to get back up. So Ruiz is a very monotonous, he's a very subtle person. He's very like laid back. So it was a bit hard to read. But when the when the, the ref said box and they went back at it, I was like, oh, this guy's game. Like this guy is here for the fight, you know? Yeah. So that is what made like the biggest difference. And then, yeah. As, as the rounds went on, I just, like, in absolute disbelief. When it was done, I think I was kind of just staying around to just, like, <laughs> wake up from this dream. Like. <laughs> but, yeah, that was absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Have you ever faced an opponent in the ring where you, you you know, you laid the hands on with the one-two and you surprised they were still standing there because you put so much into the shot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, not, not in that sense, but I just, like, sometimes you run into these opponents and they're really just tough. Like, they're there to fight. They're, they may not be, like, the craftiest people in front of you. Yeah. And I just think, like, there's been a few times where I've absolutely rocked somebody. I think to myself, shoot, like, this person is game. But not it's not a disappointment because I'm a fighter. So yeah. if you're game, I'm game. So that just gets me that much more amped. Like, I don't like being in front of somebody that, A, might not be able to stand the fight or doesn't have the fight in them. Okay. If you have the fight in you, like I am game. So <laughs> I'll, I'll acknowledge it. Like, yeah. shoot, like, this person's really here for it. Okay. Let's, <laughs> like, let's do it. Like, let's go down. <laughs> yeah. I'm about it. Now you, you, um, this is what I always wanted to try to understand. How did, how did, you know, you being living in Canada and everything, Ontario the province, how did how did you manifest to become the 2020 Olympian for Sierra Leone? Um, so my mom is born and raised in Sierra Leone. She still okay. came here quite young. She's about 13 or 14, but that's where she's born and raised. So I automatically have citizenship. Got you. So um, 
I won't get into it because it's a bit political and it's a bit okay. complicated, but um, I did run into some complications. I had some injuries. I lost some opportunities. Um, and I said, you know what? I can still fight here in Canada. Like that yeah. wasn't off the, that wasn't off the table, mm -hmm. but I decided that I wanted to take a different route. And I also wanted to do something that won't just benefit myself, but it will benefit others. Yeah. And with Sierra Leone, I mean, there's been times where people are like, oh, what's your background? I say, oh, I'm Sierra Leone. And they don't even know where that is. I remember yeah. somebody told me that that country doesn't exist. Like I was in absolute disbelief. So for me, it's nice to be able to represent my origin and bring some light on like an absolutely beautiful country. Um, speaking of Monday, on this Monday will be the, the like 12 year, sorry, 12 years, will be the one year anniversary from when I had my fight in Sierra Leone. So Monday will be that. And that was our independence weekend. So for me, it's another way to shine light on like an absolutely beautiful country. Nobody really, I can't say nobody, but few people really know the history of Sierra Leone and Freetown. And that is actually a country that really connects the Western world and us today, like mm -hmm. that is where the slaves came in and out. Freetown is where they actually released the slaves. Wow. So the slaves that were released in Freetown came from Jamaica to Canada and they were all released in Sierra Leone. So that actually, there's so much history in Sierra Leone beyond just Blood Diamond. So for me, it was like, it's more than just boxing. Um, it, it means a lot to my mother. It's huge for my father as well. He's American, but it's so huge for him. So it was just more to it than just me finding a different route of boxing. Like it's beyond boxing for me. If, if um, you know, politics didn't come to play and, you know, little injuries here and there, would you still have, you know, pursue and go on the route to um, fight for the country? I was, I was trying to do that from years ago. So I was like, that was something that I always considered. The thing was, I didn't always have the opportunity to get to Sierra Leone. So yeah. that's also what was holding me back. Um, so it was always something that I considered. Um, and if it wasn't me boxing for them, it was definitely me getting down there and taking a, like, taking a part in the community, whether it be doing camps out there or some kind of mentorship. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to say. I always had intentions of going back home, whether or not for boxing. Um, but yeah, I, I did always have intentions of going back there and, and, and getting reintroduced to my roots and stuff. Okay. So when COVID, pick, when COVID ends, because I suspect and anticipate that it will end, um, with you, are you planning to continue to further the sport? Are you planning to continue to like maybe fight in next year's Olympics if it opens up or? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, hell, hold on, don't say if it opens up because it will open yeah, up will and open they've up. only been postponed. Right. They haven't been canceled. Yeah. Um, now it's going to be a bit tough because Sierra Leone's on a 12 month lockdown, which was announced before COVID really started to take off. Right. Yeah. So, um, as far as me getting back home, yeah. I might not be able to get back home before, um, the 12 months are up. Mm -hmm. That being said, the Olympics are not off the table. I'm still training. I'm training every day. Mm -hmm. Um, staying active, being disciplined. I might not be training the way I, I would if I'm competing for the competition, but you can't, you can't train like that 20, uh, 12 hours, 12, 12 months a year. You just can't do it. Okay. So it's really a matter of just being disciplined, um, having maintenance and stuff like that. So that's not off the table. The Olympics have not been canceled. They're just postponed. Okay. <laughs> um, do you see yourself maybe going pro one day? Um, it's definitely something that's in my sights. Like I haven't, it's not, that's something that's still on the table. But for me, I want to make sure that I master, like, I don't like to skip steps. So I want to make sure I do everything that I've set out to do and accomplish as an amateur and then consider, but it's definitely something that I will consider. Um, it's crossed my mind a few times as far as when, how, with who, all of that. I'm not even going to think about it yet because I just like to think about what's now and like what's now is the Olympics. Okay. Do you have um, favorite fighters in the sport, like top five men, top five women? <laughs> you know what? Like one of my favorites is Andre Ward. Okay. Uh, I think I said that the last time. Um, Andre Ward, Jacobs. Like for me, when it comes down to my favorites, it's more than just the sport. I, for me, like, I, I know I'm a boxer, but for me, like boxing is my life. 
And so it's more than just stepping in the ring. It's the influence, the person that you are. And Andre Ward is just an amazing person um, in and outside of the ring. What he's done, he's just done something that, and, and how he's represented the sport. I absolutely love how he's represented the sport. Same goes, exactly. Same thing goes for Jacob. So those two really um, are some of my favorites. Katie Taylor is an absolute favorite of mine. So, yeah, I, I don't know about top five and all that, but definitely my top three, Katie Taylor's number one, Jacobs and Andre Ward, yeah. Okay. Before I let you go, is there anything you want to share with the, you know, the, you know your friends, your family, and your fans? Me? You know what? Like, I just hope everyone is, you know, doing well in this time. It's, it's a bit of a hard time because they always say, oh, don't isolate yourself. It's not good for your mental health. And it's a bit hard now, right? So I definitely hope that people are reaching out, connecting. We have all these tools. We have Zoom. We have all kinds of tools and resources to make sure that we're staying connected, even if it's not in the physical world. So I'm encouraging everyone to do that. I'm encouraging everyone to look out for me. I'm not going to disappoint. Um, shout out to all of my Saloon family. That's Sierra Leone. That's her little slang word for Sierra Leone. Shout out to all of my Saloon family. I hope everyone's doing well. Sierra Leone at one point had the least amount of cases in the world. Um, it's starting to increase now, so it's a bit worrisome because obviously things are different on that end of the world than they are here. But my thoughts and prayers are with everyone, anyone that's affected by the virus, guys. I just hope that we all respect the laws and minimize what's going on so that we can all get back to what we love doing. And uh, I can't wait to get back and, and get it kicking again. And where can they follow you for, like, you know, continue support, things like that? <clears throat> um, for me, all of my social media is the same name. So Boxing Lioness, but it's spelled differently. It's B-X-N-G Lioness. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Um, I've got my little YouTube channel I'm trying to work towards. So, but yeah, you can follow me there, guys. I will put, be putting out content, connecting with people, you know, connect with me. I'm open. So I hope everyone's doing well, though. We all want to get back to what we love. So let's just make it easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why not? Why, why complicate things? If they're asking us to do something, just do it. Because the sooner we do it, the easier it gets. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, DJ, I appreciate your time, and I'll see you soon. And hey, thanks again. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. All right. Bye. Okay. Take, take care. care. Bye now. There. Say that again. Take care. Be safe out there. You as well. You as All well. Right. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye now.